Today, I will present sonographic markers for early diagnosis of cesarean scar ectopic pregnancies. My name is Kathy Zane Rutledge. I am a maternal fetal medicine fellow at the University of California in San Diego. I want to thank the Institute for the opportunity to present this work. I want to acknowledge my co-investigators at the University of California, San Diego, and I have no disclosures. Cesarean scar ectopic pregnancies, or CSP, are rare. Depending on the source, the incident is about 1 in 2,000 pregnancies, but have increased in prevalence over time due to the rise of cesarean sections. Advancements in prenatal imaging has also allowed for improved diagnosis of CSP. Having a cesarean scar ectopic pregnancy, however, puts a patient at high risk for significant complications, such as uterine rupture, placenta accreta spectrum, and the need for life-saving hysterectomy. Even with improved prenatal ultrasound, however, early diagnosis of CSP is still difficult. Only in the past decade or so have the obstetric and radiology community started to include CSP in the differential diagnosis. In general, we still do not have many accepted user-friendly sonographic findings of CSP. The objective of this study is to define four sonographic markers in early gestation that should raise suspicion for a cesarean scar ectopic pregnancy and to evaluate a cohort of CSP for these markers. The four markers are 1. Presence of fundal apposition, 2. Low implantation of the gestational sac, 3. Presence of an acute angle of fundal retroflexion or the far angle, and 4. A low anterior to posterior myometrial thickness ratio. I will explain each of these markers in more detail. The first step in obstetrical imaging should always start with an overview of maternal structures. We start with a sagittal sweep of the uterus and aim to include the fundus and lower uterine segment in the frame. The first markers are apposition of the fundus and low implantation. The fundus appears collapsed, where the anterior and posterior myometrium are adjacent to each other. The gestational sac is also implanted in the lower uterine segment. This reminds me of the tail of an, a balloon animal. The distal end of the tail is small and collapsed, and the lower uterine segment appears inflated. The third marker is the presence of an acute far angle, or the fundal retroflexion angle. This is obtained on the transabdominal view and zoomed out with the fundus and the cervix in the same frame. Number one, draw a straight line along the endometrial stripe Number two, draw a straight line along the cervical canal. And lastly, measure the acute angle that is created. In this scan of a cesarean scar ectopic pregnancy, the acute angle is 48 degrees. This is a cine clip showing the far angle being measured post-production on our PAC system. We use the angle measure function. First, a line is drawn along the cervical canal. Second, a line is drawn along the endometrial stripe. And the acute angle is made. In this scan, the acute angle is 57.5 degrees. The fourth marker is a small anterior to posterior myometrium ratio. This is obtained from a transvaginal scan which is especially important in early diagnosis of cesarean scar ectopic pregnancies. The myometrial thickness is measured at the thinnest portion of the anterior myometrium, perpendicular to the bladder and uterine interface. The posterior myometrium thickness is measured at the same level on the posterior wall of the uterus. In this scan, the anterior myometrial thickness is 1.3 millimeter and the posterior is 4.5 millimeter. Thus, the calculated AP myometrium ratio is 1.3. The aim of the study is to evaluate a cohort of cesarean scar ectopic pregnancies using these markers. This was a retrospective cohort study. 
we included all known CSP who received management or delivered at our institution and also had at least one ultrasound less than 14 weeks gestation at our institution between September 2016 and December 2019. We collected maternal demographics and pregnancy outcomes, including pathology reports, if available. These were our results. We had 15 cases of CSP during the study period. The maternal demographics and characteristics are the following. The average age was 35 years old. The cohort was predominantly Hispanic of mixed race and obese. The average gestational age at first scan was 9 weeks and 6 days. The average number of prior cesarean section was 2.7 with a range from 1 to 5. And 5 patients had a history of DNC. The pregnancy outcomes were the following. 14 terminated and 1 continued her pregnancy. The termination methods are listed on the slide with five pregnancies ending in hysterectomy. The patient who continued her pregnancy had a preterm cesarean hysterectomy. Ten cases had specimens sent to pathology. The DNCs all came back as products of conception. Of the six hysterectomies, two were diagnosed with cesarean scar ectopic on pathology, two were placenta accreta, and three were placenta percreta. So how did the four markers perform? Apposition of the fundus was present in 14 scans. Low implantation was present in 14 scans. We were able to calculate the far angle in eight scans with a mean angle of 44.1 degrees. We measured myometrium thickness in six scans with a mean ratio of 0.18. We found several limitations. Two cases did not have a transvaginal scan. Four were too zoomed in to assess the fundus and the cervix in the same frame. Three patients had empty bladders, thus the anterior myometrium could not be assessed accurately. We also looked at the reading physician's impression for each scan. CSP was initially suspected in nine of the 12 pregnancies. Accreta was sus suspected in four pregnancies. Five had lacunae within the placenta, and four had irregular placental myometrial interface. In conclusion, we identified four sonographic markers that can be used to screen for CSP in the first trimester, and applied these markers on 15 cases of CSP from our institution. One strength of the study is that we really tried to identify markers that were easy to learn and user-friendly, thus can be used in all settings, even in bedside scans, and used in a community as a screening tool. We also feel confident in the diagnosis of CSP in our cohort. All 15 cases were read by a radiologist or MFM and reviewed either by our family planning division or by the MFM division before final termination or delivery planning were made. Further, we have pathological evidence of CSP or invasive placentation on the hysterectomy specimen. We acknowledge that we have a small sample size. CSP is still a relatively rare diagnosis, thus this is a limitation for any single institution study. We also recognize that there may be pitfalls that obscure the presence or absence of these markers, such as uterine anomalies or persistent uterine contractions. For example, one can falsely make a pregnancy in a bicornuate uterus appear like a CSP if the fundus of the empty horn and the gestational sac in the other horn is imaged in the same frame. Our next step is a case control study to test these markers on normal controls. We also plan to design a larger prospective study to validate these markers and better identify potential pitfalls and limitations to using these markers as a screening tool. CSP and accre placenta accreta are under a continuum. More studies are needed to better characterize and clearly define CSP. Thank you for listening. Please contact me via email with any questions or comments. I've learned so much doing this project, especially since we often breeze through maternal structures on obstetrical ultrasounds, and I welcome any suggestions or advice.